photos and videos are one of those things where we just amass thousands of them and obviously it's worse now because we have cameras on our phones so there's pretty much no limit to the amount we can take. So here is a way that you can start taming this beast and all in a way that is really easy, not overwhelming at all. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and first order of business is to let you know that my seven year old did my hair today and I am under strict instructions not to mess with it. So this is what you're getting. <laughs> Now, I will openly admit that this is probably the category that I struggle with the most, the one that needs the most work, because it's just so easy to take so many photos, isn't it? And they're not just on our phones, they are also on laptops, they're on SD cards, external hard drives, they're in the cloud wherever that is. So it is time to start taking control of your photos and putting some order on them. Now, even though we are focusing on digital photos today, most of this advice can also be used on physical photos. This is day 21 of the declutter challenge, clutter free in five, where we tackle small clutter spots and get big results and all in just five minutes. Be sure that you are subscribed. We will be focusing on digital stuff for a few more days before switching back to physical stuff and then also maintenance tips. So photos, I'm going to break this down into three sections. In the first, we will talk about how to start pairing back, how you can make a significant dent in just five minutes and then continue to chip away at it. But I am talking getting rid of hundreds of photos and videos in just a few minutes. So that is basically going to be our framework. Then we are going to look at a question that is going to make it really easy for you to decide whether a photo or a video should stay or go. Then we're going to round out with some organization, how to put some sort of order on them so that you can find the ones you want when you want them. Again, it's going to be a really simple but effective setup. Okay, our framework. This is how you are going to get the biggest results in just a few minutes. First of all, I want you to look at your device and figure out, if you can, how much space there currently is on it. Make a note of it somewhere. And also, if it's possible, how many photos and videos are on it. Now, on your phone, this should probably be pretty easy. It will most likely tell you. On other devices, like a laptop, it may be trickier. But if you can, try and figure out what that number is. The reason we do this is to give yourself a starting point so that you can actually see progress. Digital stuff is not something that you can see really, so it's hard to know that you're making that progress. It's not like clearing off a surface in your home or emptying out a cupboard. With devices on the face of it, it will look like nothing has changed. So mark your starting position. Okay, the next two things are going to get you the biggest results and then we will look at how you can continue to chip away at it. Big result number one is to go into your screenshots folder. On your phone, you should be able to find this pretty easily. It's probably marked screenshots. On your laptop or your computer, do a search for screenshot and that should bring them all up. And then just delete them. Honestly, when was the last time you referenced a screenshot. Probably never. It's just too easy to take a screenshot of things to remind us of something that we might want to buy or a quote that we read that we really liked, but we never go back and look at those things. So just delete them all. If you are hesitant to delete them all, scroll through really quickly first, um, but really you'll probably get rid of the vast majority of these. That step alone is going to get rid of a huge number of photographs for you, but because they're screenshots, they're probably not going to uh, take up a huge amount of space. So the next step then is going to be designed to help you save a lot of that space. And that is, videos. You probably have lots of little clips on your phone, videos that other people have sent you, maybe your Instagram stories that were automatically saved. Set a timer for a few minutes and delete as many as you can. You'll be surprised how many you'll be able to whip through, but afterwards 
be sure to go into your trash folder because when you delete those, they won't actually be saving you any space, they'll just go into a trash folder. Make sure that you're then going into that trash folder or recycling bin or whatever it is called on your device and emptying that out too. That is how you are actually going to clear the space. Going forward then, just keep chipping away at this anytime you have a few spare minutes. And I'm willing to bet that every day you probably have a few spare minutes where you're sitting with your phone in your hand. Now, if on your device, they are divided up by date so that you can check a whole month's worth of photos, you know, you can go in and click August 2020 and all those photos will pop up for you. A really great trick here then is every day, just spend a few minutes going through a particular month and decluttering the photos from that month. This is only going to take you a minute or two if you just go through it really quickly. And that way, after less than two weeks, you will have decluttered an entire year's worth of photos. Another way to do it then, it's the way that I like to do it, is that every Sunday for my weekly reset, I will sit down and I will go through all of the photographs and all the vid videos that I have taken that week, in that past week, and I will whittle them down as much as I can. I do that every Sunday and what that means is that I'm at least keeping on top of it. You know, week to week, I'm making sure that I'm not just taking a bunch of photographs and then just carrying them forward week after week. And then anytime I have a few spare minutes on top of that and I'm feeling a little bit ambitious and enthusiastic, I will then scroll back a few months or a few years and see if I can get rid of a few additional photos. It just means that I'm always keeping on top of it right now and then when I have the time and the energy and the motivation, I'm continuing to chip away and make improvements on the old photographs. Right, let's move on to the question that you can ask. The one that I think is going to make the biggest impact and not only on the photos that you've already taken, it's not only going to help clear those out, but it will also make you stop and think before you take any new photos or videos. And that is, will this still matter in five years? We all have at least one photo, I'm willing to bet, of a blue sky. That's it, just blue sky or a nice tree. But while they are nice photographs, they're not meaningful. You know, if you want to look at a picture of a nice blue sky or find a lovely tree, just do a Google search for them. Ditto if you cannot remember where the photograph or the video clip was taken, you can't identify the people in it. The only photos and videos that you should be left taking up space on your device and or in your home are the ones that tell your story, the ones that are meaningful to you. And yeah, maybe one of those might be a blue sky one. Um, Sam and I took a blue sky photo when we were in Paris years ago. I'm talking like way back at the beginning of our romance. And that one has special memories for me because I just particularly remember that day. So yeah, that blue sky photo will stay but not all the other ones where I was just like, oh, look, a lovely sunny day. <laughs> Those really mean nothing. So ask yourself that question, will it still matter in five years? Will I still even remember what this moment was in five years? Unless it evokes a powerful, positive memory, you can probably let it go. Let's move on to storage then. Most devices I think these days will have some way of automatically sorting, dating your photos. If you have a Mac, the Photos app is great. Otherwise, I have heard wonderful things about Google Photos. So check them all in there. Let technology work its magic. But if for some reason they will not categorize automatically, or maybe you're dealing with physical photographs, let's talk about how you can put some order on them. Personally, I think it's best. I think this is the easiest way to do it, at least initially, to sort them by kind of season or phase of life. So I'm talking baby years, school years, college years, 20 something years. That way it is broad enough that you don't have to be, you know, really specific about exactly what year it was taken or exactly what event it was taken at. 
but it is still good enough for you to be able to retrieve a photograph or know what category a photograph will fit into. That is going to help you really quickly and easily sort through and categorize your photographs. And then if down the line you want to get more specific with them and kind of subcategorize them, you can. But start broad and that way you will be able to make those quick decisions and quickly put some order on all of those photographs that have just been sitting around in boxes or in folders. Two more things then before we wrap up. Now is a great time to look back and see how many photographs and videos you have on your device now, as well as how much storage you have left, how much storage space you have now that you have cleared out a lot. That is how much progress you can make in just a few minutes. And now that you have started selecting the photographs and the videos that really mean the most to you, back them up. There is no point in going through this process, picking out your favorite ones and then losing them all. Back them up today if you're not sure how, a quick search online will sort you out and then get yourself some sort of consistent schedule so that you are regularly backing them up. Now, if your desktop looks like a digital jungle <laughs> with all the files and folders and you can never seem to find what you want when you want it, we're gonna sort that out in the next video. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss it. Gareth Mila Mahagwev. Bagus vakimeshif shikadua. Sloan. Kinda crazy, but I kinda like it. <laughs>